They hear socialists, they think herpes, Bernie. You ha we have to get right, But then what we do is we have to make the movement, if you like, to correlate what we're talking about. Because on every one of the major issues I am talking about, the American people agree. Joining me now, John Nichols, Washington correspondent at The Nation, author of The S Word, A Short History of an American Tradition, Socialism, and Matt Bennett from Third Way, a think tank positioned towards the right of the Democratic Party. He also worked on both of Bill Clinton's presidential campaigns. Matt, let me start with you. Um, what do you think the odds are that America would elect someone who calls himself a Democratic Socialist? Zero. I think there is absolutely no chance that America is going to elect a Democratic Socialist. Because, look, the bottom line is we are a centrist country. On our good days, we're center-left. On our bad days, we're center-right. But we're centrist, and we're not going to elect anyone who appears through their rhetoric or their narrative to, to be too far off center and to be a little bit too radical. And calling yourself a socialist, even with the qualifier of Democrat in front of it, just isn't going to work in America. It might work in a small, homogenous place like Vermont or Sweden, but it's not going to work nationwide here. John, what do you think? Well, I'm always confident in America's ability to involve and to embrace new ideas. And the thing I'm struck by is that if we were sitting here 40, 45 years ago, we might well have had a, a number of people sitting around saying, you know, Ronald Reagan's modern conservatism, it's, it's just too extreme. It, it breaks with the old right ideals, the older conservative ideals, and it's going to turn too many people off. It can't possibly work. Well, what Ronald Reagan did was to go out and explain how his ideas, which people often dismissed as extreme, were really in sync with a lot of American traditions, with a lot of American ideals. And he was successful. He was elected president. I think that, that there will come a time, and it could well be sooner rather than later, when a democratic socialist will explain that he or she is a part of a distinct and distinguished American tradition that includes Helen Keller and Albert Einstein and A. Philip Randolph, the fellow who called the March on Washington in 1963. And that, frankly, uh, you know, was informed by folks like Norman Thomas, who counseled FDR on issues but, like Social Security. But John, let me, Matt, please, go ahead. I mean, Chris, we're talking about things that happened 50 or more years ago. Uh, I will grant that all those were great Americans. But the bottom line here is that we are living in a moment uh, regrettably for all of us Democrats, where people are highly skeptical of government. And what they hear when they hear the word socialist is somebody that wants, that believes that every problem can be solved with more government. That is not what mainstream Democrats like Clinton are, are offering, but it is what uh, Sanders is selling, and it's just not going to resonate at this moment in American politics. So that's a, the, the, let me just sort of intervene here, because that's an empirical claim, right? So uh, about, about how this will resonate. We should distinguish, right, between some sort of set, set of substantive policies that Bernie Sanders is advocating and the term that he is using in the label, right? There might be a, it might be the case that the substantive policies that he's advocating are quite popular, people are turned off by the label, vice versa, right? Um, there's, there's some data on this, and John, I want to talk to you about this, right? So there's the polling about would you vote for an ex-president, Catholic, woman, black, Hispanic, Jewish, Mormon, gay or lesbian, evangelical Christian, Muslim, an atheist, socialist. Socialist comes in last. I mean, that is not particularly promising, right? I mean, this is below atheist. Um, so that seems to me like there is an actual branding issue here, despite the fact that we've seen the favorabilities for socialism increase in the wake of the Great Recession. It does better among younger voters than older voters. But there is a, there is a labeling issue here. Well, sure, there always is with all sorts of ideologies. Uh, libertarianism had a problem a while back. You know, the fact of the matter is that when we open up Whoop. Matt, I think we lost, we, we lost John Nichols. Matt, Matt Bennett, your arguing skills apparently destroyed his satellite feed, so I guess that's <laughs> kudos, kudos to you. Let me, let, me, let me push back on you, because I think the point sure. John, John made about libertarian is important, right? These boundaries of what, who gets to decide what's center and what's not center are not fixed, right? The, the way that they get established, actually, is through this dynamic process of people campaigning on ideas, ideas that may seem totally far out when introduced, and then work their way to the center. So what's, what's, what's to say? Why give up before you even start? Well, look, that's undoubtedly true. But the other 
uh, fact of American politics is you do have to kind of catch a wave. You have to be part of a moment that uh, Americans are feeling. One of the things you have to do to get elected president is to find the moment you're living in and, and show Americans how their lives are going to be better uh, as a result of your policies. And again, because people are so deeply skeptical of government because they're so jaded, in part because of what the Republicans have done to government in the last few years, it's a very tough sell to, to argue that, for example, we should have a government run, entirely government run health care at a time when even Obamacare is unpopular. John, uh, like Democratic Socialism in the U.S., John Nichols is back. Uh, he endures. He, can't, he cannot be kept away. Um, do, do, I, I want to ask you this question, John, I, and, and I want an honest answer from you. You and I have known each other a very long time. We're colleagues of the nation. Mm -hmm. You walk into the voting booth uh, tomorrow in, in my make-believe world. John, your vote mm -hmm. will determine the nominee, whether it's Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. Would you honestly vote for Bernie Sanders? Do you honestly think that were he, were he the Democratic nominee, that he would have appreciably the same chance of becoming the next president as, say, Hillary Clinton or one of the other candidates? Well, I'll counsel that I'm not here to endorse a candidate. Right, no, right. But if you're asking me if I'm comfortable voting for a Democratic socialist, for the Democratic or the Republican nomination for president of the United States, I would say yes. And I'll tell you why. The fact of the matter is that we have just been through a scorching economic crisis with the collapse of Wall Street and all the challenges that came from that. We're in the midst of something very equivalent to the Industrial Revolution, only now it's a digital revolution with automation and so much else. To assume that this country can't take on new ideas and embrace them, I think is silly. I think the fact of the matter is, it might well be that those with the bolder ideas are the ones who will attract people to the polls. All right, John Nichols and Matt Bennett, thank you. Hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russer. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.